Galnet News Digest, 16th of February 3307. We read the news, so you don't have to. In this week's news, Lacon saved by Alliance buyout. Summit's gonna happen. Rochester gets a bloody nose. Lacon saved by Alliance buyout. The prospect of Lacon Spaceways being bought out by forces hostile to the Alliance has been banished after the Alliance Assembly voted overwhelmingly to acquire a majority holding in the ailing spaceship manufacturer. The manufacturer had recently shown itself vulnerable to hostile takeover with Core Dynamics very nearly completing a deal and Sirius Corporation expressing an interest. Chair of Lacon's Board of Directors, Naomi Landseer, welcomed the government purchase of a controlling share in the company as building on past collaborations and stressed that the availability of Lacon ships throughout the galaxy could now continue uninterrupted. Lacon Spaceways was founded in what is now Federal Space back in the 27th century. It wasn't until the end of 3303 that its partnership with the Alliance began, with the commissioning of the Type 10 Defender as a robust anti-Thorgoid gun platform. The Chieftain, Challenger and Crusader followed, but Lacon's staples remained the Type 9 Heavy Freighter and the lightweight, all-purpose Asp Explorer. Not everyone was happy with the deal. Prime Ministerial candidate Nakato Kane led a small band of Assembly members who voted against it. It was announced that Lacon's corporate headquarters will be moved adjacent to the seat of Alliance government in Alioth, as will much of the manufacturing capacity. The Alliance Council of Admirals has expressed its gratitude that the supply of military equipment has been safeguarded. Summit's going to happen. There's a galactic summit starting on the 25th of February and it's going to be attended by top politicians from around the galaxy. In unrelated news, there's a bunch of ruthless, well-connected and deadly neo-Marlinist terrorists on the loose. What could possibly go wrong? Well, it's perfectly possible that the summit will go well, that the leaders of the superpowers will meet, that they'll sign memos of understanding, hold press conferences, where they shake hands with each other while maintaining fixed smiles for the cameras, and that everyone will steal the toweling bathrobes and the toiletries from their hotel rooms and return to their respective home systems without incident, safe in the knowledge that the galaxy is just a little bit better organised and just a little bit less likely to disintegrate into a bloodbath of warring powers and superpowers than it was the previous week. Does that seem a likely scenario to you? It's not, is it? Something is going to go badly wrong. And Galnet News Digest Money is on a terrorist attack. We don't yet know who the Federal and Alliance delegates will be, but the Empire has been very clear about who it is sending and who will be staying safely back home. It's almost like a dungeon master making sure everyone is clear about where everyone is standing before they open the door. So, who will be where? Emperor Arissa Livinu Duval will not be attending. She's washing her hair that day, and meeting with dissenters like the Marlinists would be setting a bad precedent. Queen of the Slavers, Zamina Torval, will not be attending. She will be chairing the Senate in a temporary capacity because Chancellor Anders Blaine will be away from the Empire during the summit. That's because Blaine will be at the summit, representing the Emperor. For a long time, Emperor Hengist's right-hand man, Blaine was accused of disloyalty when members of his staff sided with Empress Dawn, the traditionalist movement that advocated the abolition of the Senate and autocratic control by an Emperor that it, Empress Dawn, would choose. Somehow, Blaine managed to retain the trust of the present Emperor Arissa and remains Chancellor 24 years after his appointment. Senator Denton Petraeus will also be at the summit. Like Blaine, he had indirect links to Emperor's Dawn. It was one of Petraeus's patrons, Brendan Paul Darius, an Emperor's Dawn sympathiser, who on the 5th of August 3301 struck the fatal blow that led to the death of Emperor Hengist. Petraeus redeemed himself by tracking down and destroying the Emperor's Dawn movement over the following year. 
Patriots has also been the scourge of the neo-Marlinist terrorist movement, disrupting the lives of many peaceful Marlinists in the process. But ultimately, it is Patriots who must take responsibility for allowing the daring escape of the so-called Theta NMLA terrorist cell from an Imperial Interrogation Centre. The final Imperial delegate, other than all the bureaucrats, is Princess Ashling de Waal. Once again, she was tainted by association with the Empress Dawn ultra-traditionalist movement, and more recently, the isolationist Nova Imperium movement, the leader of which, Hadrian Janssen, who now styles himself Hadrian Augustus Duval, she helped reconcile with the rest of the extended Imperial Duval family. Her father, the dissolute Prince Harold, was assassinated by the Neo-Marlinists last year, so it seems unlikely she has a lot of sympathy for the terrorists. Among others, this imperial delegation of Blaine, Patrius and Ashling Duval will be meeting with two of the leaders of the recently settled Marlinist colonies, First Minister Jenna Fairfax and Minister Aaron White, who has recently stated that one of his objectives is not to have his own kingdom outside the empire, but to remove the king, by which he presumably means emperor, from within the empire. So, this meeting between Marlinists and Imperials might get a little heated. Marlinist minister Amrita Ross will not be attending. But what about that Theta neo-Marlinist terror cell that Petraeus let slip through his fingers? Unlike the Marlinists, the NMLA believes in violent means to achieve their objective. Other than assassination, they have five times used Thargoid caustic enzyme technology coupled with a delivery system developed by engineer Liz Ryder to cripple starports, the last time being the bombing of Federal Starport Kepler Orbital to kill the Nine Martyrs, NMLA terrorists who might otherwise have been tortured into releasing information about the terror group. The Theta Stell is believed to still have a bomb-making factory in LTT 1935. With a bit of work, that factory might be discoverable but no one has yet reported its whereabouts. It would be fanciful to imagine the NMLA is not considering some plot against the Galactic Summit, although the nature of the action cannot yet be known. Will they bomb the venue? Will they attempt to take hostages? Would commanders take up arms to rescue old Chancellor Blaine from their clutches? How about Imperial Navy mastermind Petraeus? How about Princess Ashling? Of course, the NMLA will have to get past the might of the Sirius Corporation's private navy if it wants to take the hostages. The Corporation's musclemen, Sirius Navy, is good at persuading independent systems to buy Sirius products, and their methods are not necessarily entirely above board. But can they stop determined terrorists? With little over a week to go before the start of the summit, it won't be long before we find out. Rochester gets a bloody nose. It's seeming all but certain that renegade entrepreneur Jupiter Rochester is more gas than giant, as his attempts to establish a new base for the so-called Jupiter Division in HIP 54-530 are foiled by a large federal force intent on arresting him and shipping him back to the Federation to face the quite possibly inevitable consequences of arranging for the federal president to be blown up. The Silver Legal Group, which is organising this work, has a clear upper hand in the war of attrition to clear the system of Jupiter Division's forces. So, unless Rochester can summon up a miracle, or unless he leaves the system soon, his time as a renegade fleeing from federal justice seems likely to be short-lived. With Zachary Hudson, who became president as a consequence of Rochester's treason, losing ground in the opinion polls, and with Rochester's family disowning him, it seems he has few friends left he can turn to. It seems that Jupiter Rochester could soon end up sharing a cell with disgraced Fleet Admiral Lucas Vincent. Unless, of course, he can persuade the NMLA to rescue him. And that's this week's Galnet News. Galnet News. We read the news so you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> 